morning, the light streaming in. It's wonderful to be here with you today as we come together to worship God. And this is Reign of Christ Sunday. It's the last Sunday of our church year because Advent begins next week and that kicks off the new church year. So today we celebrate. I'm going to ask minute people to start making their way up, please. Now, Christmas is now less than a month away. Advent does start next Sunday, and the choir has begun to work on Christmas Eve music. And there is space for you in our seasonal choir to show up at choir practice Tuesday evening at 7 p.m. And also, too, it's not too early to start inviting everyone you know to our family-friendly Christmas Eve that will take place at 7 p.m. on Christmas Eve. All right, we'll, we'll begin the parade. There you go, Sylvia. You said that was the last time. Long social committee event. I think that was just pushed up a bit. Anyway, that was the wrong social committee event. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Come on. Should we try that again? Yeah. On the first day of Christmas, my true love gave to me. Partridge in a pear tree. OK, that's enough of that one. This is just a save the date. I even dug out my red sweater. Um, but it's a little too early for the hat. I'm not even going to put it on. It'll mess up my hair anyway. So, Sunday, December 17th, right after church, we will have our annual Christmas sing-along. Dig out those Christmas sweaters, the ugly ones too, and Christmas hats if you have any, and wear them that day. Not mandatory, but a whole lot of fun. And we will, of course, be revisiting the 12 days of Christmas. Words will be provided. Gets a little dicey when you get to 11 maids of milking and 12 drummers drumming. Now, I did check, and it's eight maids of milking, not 11. So you can see where it can get a little, you know, chancy. So the words will be provided. Oh, and there will be served hot apple cider. Yummy and a treat. Oh, and another thing, today happens to be the 119th running of the original Toronto Santa Claus Parade, beginning at 12.30. I assume it's being televised. They did say original. I don't know what they mean by original, because I imagine a lot of those original people are no longer with us. But anyway, uh, we know what they mean. It's on today at 12.30, November 26th. Seems a little early. So the, charade, the parade's today, but mark your calendars for Sunday, December 17th, right after church, for the Christmas sing-along. Thank you, Sylvia. If you had done all 12 verses, I was going to gong you after five. <laughs> all right, Candace. This announcement is also about Christmas. We will be decorating the church for Christmas after service today. and. Uh, um, I have some volunteers. If there's anybody else that's here that would like to stay and help, that would be great. And especially, I, I would like a couple of men because we need to get the tree out of the worship cupboard and haul it up here. Um, so if we have a, somebody with a little bit of eh, then uh, that would be great. Thank you very much. Thank you, Candace. Tracy? Good morning, everybody. I'm here to talk about Advent. I'm going to read this because I haven't memorized it, so I will read this. Advent begins on, thank you, December 3rd and ends December 24th. Advent is the season of longing, expectancy, and preparation. Advent offers hope, peace, joy, and love. You are invited this Advent to read a daily devotional. Pope Benedict once said, it is a beautiful task of Advent to awaken in all of us 
memories of goodness, and thus to open doors of hope. In the narthex, you will find Advent devotionals. Please accept this small gift from your friends at Glen Abbey United Church. If anybody would like to join an Advent discussion Thursdays on December 7th, 14th, and the 21st at 7.30 on Zoom, please sign up. There's a form in the back beside the booklets. Thank you. Thanks, Drew. Well, hi everyone. My name is Bill Sparling, and I just want to say today, I've been meeting and to say for a number of times, the wonderful spirit of being a member of this congregation. And we've had a great time together, and people increasingly feeling comfortable with each other as a congregation, and the congregation of Jesus Christ our Lord. And we're very happy that you come in here and say hello to each other, and we want to encourage you to be people who say, hi, how you doing? How's it going? Do you need is something going wrong? Do you need some help? And we're all part of that kind of family together. So anytime, be a pal of the congregation of Jesus Christ right here. And okay, you have a word. So um, finishing that off, I'll just, um, uh, we had a uh, coffee together the other day, Bill, Jane, and I, and we got talking about fellowship. And uh, Bill and Jane were talking about how in past they always had wonderful um, gatherings with food um, at the end of services. And it was always a great means of people getting together and enjoying each other's company, sharing just stories and just being, you know, um, together as a church family. So we, um, Jane and I, um, did a bunch of baking which we're gonna serve after church today. And what we thought, or what we we're hoping that we may be able to do is, every Sunday leading up to Christmas, um, if anybody cares to prepare, maybe a, a favorite treat or, 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 or something that, that, that brings you know, the meaning of Christmas out to you that maybe is a tradition in your family that you can either purchase or you can, you can bake it, um, it would just be a nice way for us to share the coffee and, and, and maybe something special after service. There's a sign in the a sheet in the back if you want to sign your name up for any of the Sundays, it would be greatly appreciated. Great, thank you, Tracy. So have a great week. May the incredible. Oh, okay. <laughs> All right, and along that line, too, if you're doing some baking for Christmas, if you wouldn't mind putting maybe a little extra plate or batch away. For uh, December 31st, that morning, we're going to have a very casual, very different service. It's going to be called the Christmas Cookie Cafe, and you'll be able to get cookies and cider or coffee or whatever all through the service. So maybe when you're baking, if you could just put a few aside. Uh, this Saturday, December 2nd, there will be a tour leaving from our church to go to Woodland Cultural Center in Brantford to learn more about Indigenous issues and residential schools. And if you're interested in going, please contact Mary Anderson. On Tuesday, December 5th, will be the next Tuesday 2.30 tea time conversation and social event that is open to all seniors in the community. You can go online to purchase tickets for the Oakville Prayer Breakfast, Wednesday, December 6th at 6.30 a.m. Guest speaker is going to be Gary O'Neill, who's the Executive Director of Kerr Street Ministries. And you just go on to oakvilleprayerbreakfast.com and you can buy tickets there. New Member Sunday will be December 10th. And if you're interested in taking this next step, of officially becoming a full member, please email me or speak to me after the service. And then a reminder for all men to mark your calendars for the annual Christmas luncheon on Monday, December 11th, and contact Gary Doby if you'd like to attend, and you don't have to belong to the men's club to come to it. Hopefully we can, as Bill mentioned, all stay after service for a cup of coffee, Maybe have a chat with someone we haven't spoken to before and get to know some of our new friends. In the hills and valleys that make up these lives that we live, as a church family, we mourn with people and we celebrate with them. And this is such a time for Susan Francis, who lost her mom this past week, and she is celebrating 
her birthday, Susan's birthday, on November 30th. So let's sing happy birthday to Susan. Yvonne, please. Thank you. So during our candle lighting time, we've been having getting to know you sessions. And at first I thought, well, I don't have anybody for this week. But then I thought, well, wait a second. There's a lot of newer people here. So today, it's going to be me. I was born and raised in Sudbury, even though some people think I have a Midwestern accent. Uh, as well, uh, attended school there and business degree, moved to Toronto for my corporate career, which spent many years at in marketing and sales, and then decided to become a minister. I got, finally recognized the call, it was seven years to do the master's, uh, five years part-time, and then the year of internship, then a year full-time, and have been ordained for 15 years now. Uh, we have a son. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, we have a son who lives in Sarnia and two grandkids there. Uh, our daughter Sarah is still with us, and my eldest stepson lives in Hamilton and is married. I enjoy golf, I enjoy our dogs, I enjoy traveling. I'm married to that lovely woman in the back row. Yes. Now that's a woman who deserves applause for going through that. And uh, as well, avid, if not a great golfer, and a bit of a football fan. So this morning, as I light the candle, if we can concentrate on the candle and listen to the music, and truly prepare our hearts to worship today. Everything you need this morning, you'll find projected here on screen. And we'll begin with the words to the call to worship. When did we give Christ food? <coughs> Sharing the peace of Christ is also nice. <laughs> may, may the peace of our risen Lord be with you all. And also with you. Now we'll do the call to worship. When did we give Christ food? When we helped feed someone who was hungry. When did we give Christ something to drink? When we helped someone who was thirsty. When did we welcome Jesus? When we made sure to feel like they belong. The reign of Christ is upon us. Rejoice, the Lord is King. And we'll begin by singing that great old hymn, Rejoice, the Lord is King number 213 in your hymn books. The words will be on screen, and I invite you to please rise as you are able.
we'll continue with the prayer of confession and invocation that you'll find projected here. As we all say together, God of power and love, you raised Jesus in glory to rule over all creation. And yet we confess that we don't always follow his example. We get tired of being asked to donate. We change the channel to avoid seeing those who hunger. We sometimes ignore the outstretched hand on the street and don't make eye contact in case we see the face of Christ in the least of these. Please forgive us. Gracious God, send your Holy Spirit. Fill us now. The reign of Christ is upon us. Amen. And the good news of the gospel is it's true that sometimes we do get fatigued with the number of requests that we have for our time and for our money. And sometimes it's difficult to keep wanting to give and give and give, and especially at this time of year when the requests really seem to flood in. But what is true is that God has provided more than what we need. God has provided a way for us to help those who are in need. And we pray that we will continue to have our hearts softened, that we can do God's will. We pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Our praise song today is one that we had earlier this year, so hopefully it'll be somewhat familiar to you. We haven't had one lately because we've had so many other things going on with communion and Remembrance Sunday and baptism. So I'm going to invite you to please rise as you are able and sing together and move a little bit if you feel so inclined.
always been. Please be seated. Some very true words in that one. Can I ask my young friends to come forward, please? All the kids, come on up. Anybody younger-ish? As always, except Florian. All right. Everybody. Oh, have a seat. Have a seat. There we go. Ah, sitting with Grandma? Yeah, very nice. Good morning. Just make sure I got enough wire. How's everybody doing today? Okay? Excellent, excellent. All right, well. Does anybody have any good news they want to share this week? Anything going on you want to let people know about? Yes, Kate? There was a lot of sale for Black Friday, and <laughs> it was amazing. Yeah, good old Black Friday. This one on. Somebody turn this on, please. Thank you. One more time, Kate. Okay, there was a lot of stuff on sale for Black Friday, and it was very, very good. Yeah, you loaded up, did you? Yes. All right. Anything, Demi? Not really good news, but I have three tests next week, so. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. The really good news, this time next week they'll be over. Yes. <laughs> okay. Hi, Elliot, anything going on? Well, I got a job, which is good. Excellent. Way to go. Way to go. Congratulations. Hey, how you doing? Hi. Do you want to say your name? Blake. It's Blake. Yes. Where's Carly today? Ah. Right. Now, I don't think we've met before. Austin. Austin. Anything good going on this week? Not so much. Joan, anything going? Yeah, we have an asynchronous fri uh, Friday, which is a day where you can study at home. That's a good thing. Yeah. Excellent. Yeah, you get a lot more done. Hello. Hi. 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 What's your name? Naomi, I'm so glad you're here. I like your dress. Very pretty. Say thank you. What's your name? <laughs> <laughs> it's not ice cream. It's not an ice cream cone. It's not ice cream cone. Hey, hi. Hi. <laughs> hi. Oh, okay. okay. And his name? Xander. Hi, Xander. Glad to see you. Well, you all look great today. So I have a question. So when... You're going to go out with your mom or your dad, and you go to cross the street. Do you have to take their hand? Do you take their hand when you cross the street? She said yes. I think she said yes. She said yes. Excellent. Well, that's important because those are good rules to learn, and our parents teach us things like that. So question here, who has Netflix at their house? Who has Netflix? <laughs> Have you seen the movie Leo? The lizard one? Yes. Have you seen it? It is really, really good. Yes, sir. Um, I saw it on my TV. Perfect. Did you like it? I didn't watch all of it. Well, you should watch the rest of it. It's really good. And it's funny. And in it... Leo is a talking lizard that the kids need to take home sometimes to have for the weekend. It's Adam Sandler who's doing it. And Leo teaches the kids some really, really good things. 
and it's very funny. So I would highly recommend watching Leo, because he teaches them good, good things. Now, he's getting his steps in. So who else teaches us good things? The Bible, which is basically a representation of God's words and stories, was us. Perfect answer, Joan. Way to go. Yes, we learn a lot. Jesus taught us a lot. And I know in Sunday school, you'll be learning more about what Jesus taught us. So before you head out, why don't we have a small prayer together? Let's bow our heads and say after me. Dear God... Thank you for Jesus. Thank you for teaching us. Thank you for our parents, our families, and our church family. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you for talking to me, everybody. Good luck on those three tests. And everybody go enjoy Sunday school. Not you two. There we go. All right, let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Loving God, when we come here today, it can be from a whole variety of places in our minds and our hearts. Some are grieving, some are celebrating, some are looking for clarity and for some answers that they need. No matter what it is, we know that you have something to say to us today whether it be in the scriptures that we're about to hear, whether it be in the song we just sang, or when we have those quiet moments and a thought occurs to us, we have no idea where it came from. Lord, we so look forward to you speaking to us. So open up our ears, our eyes, our minds and hearts to take it all in and do something about it. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. And I would like to invite Keith McMillan up, please, for a reading from the Gospel, as well as the responsive song. My wife just told me I should try to be cute like some of those kids, but I don't think that's possible. So. <laughs> Anyways, I'm... Uh, reading from Matthew today, the Gospel of Matthew, the lectionary reading. It's, uh, it's uh, as I read through this, and I kept going afterwards, uh, the, the, the Last Supper, I mean, the, the, yes, the Last Supper and then the crucifixion starts off in the next chapter. So this is probably one of the last parables that I'm aware of anyways that's told by Matthew about uh, uh, Jesus tells as reported by Matthew. Anyways, here we go. And first of all, the Son of Man, as I start off, is re basically is, the, is Jesus. He's referred to as Jesus. 31 to 40, I believe. When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep on his right hand and the goats on the left, at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, come you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger and you welcomed me. I was naked and you gave me clothing. I was sick and you took care of me. I was in prison and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer, Lord, when, when was it that I saw you hungry and gave you food 
or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and, you gave, and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and then visited you? And the king will answer him, truly I will tell you, just as you did it for one of the least of these, you are members of my family, you did it to me. Very good message for whether you're a Christian or not. Try to do good things. The, uh, the uh, Psalm reading is, uh, is found uh, in Psalm 95, and basically what it says is, it, what the psalmist is suggesting to the, advocating to the reader, that you should worship and praise the Lord. Psalm 95, part one. O come, let us sing to God. Let us come into God's presence with thanksgiving. For you are a great God. In your hand are both are the depths of the earth. The sea is yours. For you made it. You are indeed our God. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you, Keith. Fine job on the reading. Our anthem today is Revelation 19. And a lot of the words to this anthem tie in so very, very well with Reign of Christ Sunday.
Thank you, Yvonne. Thank you to all the soloists, of which there were many. Our reading today, the second one from the New Testament, is from the epistles, or the letters, of Paul. And this is from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. And we listen for the word of God in what Paul wrote. For this reason, ever since I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all of God's people, I have not stopped giving thanks to God for you. I remember you in my prayers and ask the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the glorious Father, to give you the Spirit who will make you wise and reveal God to you so that you will know him. I ask that your minds may be open to see his light so that you will know what is the hope to which he has called you. How rich are the wonderful blessings he promises his people and how very great is his power at work in us who believe. This power is working in us. It's the same as the mighty strength which he used when he raised Christ from death and seated him at his right side in the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and lords. He has a title superior to all titles of authority in this world and in the next. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all things. The church is Christ's body, the completion of him who himself completes all things everywhere. Thanks be to God for these very holy words. Well, my sermon title today is Jesus is Lord. And next Sunday will be the beginning of that exciting time as we begin the new church year by entering Advent, the four weeks of preparation before Christmas. Even though I think the stores have had Christmas merchandise on the shelves for a month or maybe two, and radio stations, some of them have been playing continuous Christmas music for two weeks already. Well, this Sunday is known as Reign of Christ Sunday, or by its former name, before we became so politically correct, Christ the King. After World War I, a pope designated the last Sunday in October as Christ the King Sunday, a day to remember that Christ received power and honor from God and was thereby made ruler of the universe. So you might be asking, I thought it was supposed to be the last Sunday in October, but eventually they moved Christ the King Sunday to the last Sunday of the church year, which we're in today. When they were already accustomed to reflecting on Christ's return at the end of time, to rule over all creation. That theme echoes through Revelation, the last book of the Bible. And the book of Revelation, it's wondrous and strange, and it comes from the end of the first century when Christians were being persecuted because they refused to worship the emperor. Now these type of writings, they usually speak of two ages, the present, in which the people are going through pain, and the future, when glory will be achieved. Well, Revelation takes us even further. We read, Jesus Christ, the faithful witness, firstborn of the dead, and ruler, ruler of the kings of the earth. To him be glory and dominion forever and ever. And in the same way, in the first book of the Bible, Humans were given dominion over the animals. In the last book, Jesus is attributed dominion and lordship over all of creation, including its kings. Dr. Ray Pritchard writes, the final title given to Jesus, it relates to you and me. He is our Lord. The Greek word is kyrios, 
This word occurs many times in the New Testament, and it was also common throughout the Roman Empire. Its basic meaning is absolute ruler. To call Jesus Lord means that he is sovereign over the entire universe, and he has the right of sovereign rule over you and of me. In Romans 10, 9, it says, If you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. Notice how simple that phrase is. Jesus is Lord. Well, to confess with the mouth means more than simply saying the words. It means to agree from the heart that we believe what we are saying. So in order to understand this properly, we need a bit of a background on how the Romans ruled their vast empire. Because remember, the empire stretched from Europe into the Middle East and across the northern coast of Africa. It encompassed many provinces and it included many local religions. Scholars speak of mystery religions that were found in many of the different parts of the empire. Because each of those various religions, they had their own code of conduct, their own sacred scriptures, its own pattern of worship, its own form of sacrifice, its own sacred rites and priesthood, and on and on and on. Well, because these religious religions tended to keep people pacified, the Romans left them alone. And as much as possible, Rome required only that taxes be paid, we know they were good at that, and that everyone be required to say, Caesar is Lord. That's all. Just three simple words. Say, Caesar is Lord, and then go on about your business. Affirm that Caesar was sovereign, and then follow whatever religion suited you. For many people in the empire, that was no big burden. But Christians steadfastly refused to say, Caesar is Lord. They simply wouldn't say it. They wouldn't. How could they say, Caesar is Lord, when their faith taught them that Jesus is Lord? They could not, and they would not, deny Christ. And that is why during the days of persecution, Christians were slaughtered, they were murdered by the thousands, they were crucified, they were burned at the stake, they were run through with swords and thrown to the wild animals. But this was the great dividing line that Christians would not cross. A fellow named Chuck Colson, he notes that in the first century, if you stood in a public gathering and cried out, Jesus is God, no one would be upset. But if you shouted, Jesus is Lord, you would start a riot. Let's be crystal clear about this. Rome did not persecute Christians because they believed in the deity of Christ or that Jesus was the promised Messiah or that Jesus died on the cross and rose from the dead. Those were religious beliefs. They didn't threaten the state. But when Christians said, Jesus Christ is our Lord and there is no other, they took that as a direct attack on Caesar worship and it was punishable by death. That's one of the reasons that the Lordship of Christ matters so much. To call him Lord means that we surrender all we have to him and we follow him gladly wherever he leads, whatever it costs. Now, with our readings today from the Common Lectionary, most years we usually concentrate on the Matthew 25 reading that Keith read so well for us. When the king, that being Jesus, said he'll put the sheep at his right hand and goats at the left and say, come, you that are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom. For I was hungry and you gave me food. I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, you welcomed me. I was naked, you gave me clothing, sick, and you take care of me. I was in prison, you visited me. And then reveals that we did all these things to him when we did them to the least of these. Excellent words. Excellent words to remember and to live by. 
But to change things up today, I want to concentrate on our reading from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, where we read, How very great is his power at work in us who believe. This power in working in us is the same as the strength that he raised Christ from death and seated him at the right side in the heavenly world. Christ rules there above all heavenly rulers, authorities, powers, and lords. He is a title superior to all titles of authority in this world and the next. God put all things under Christ's feet and gave him to the church as supreme Lord over all things. So we fast forward. We can confidently say that Jesus is Lord. And this fact that Jesus is made ruler over the entire universe That can be a little hard to fathom. That's a really big concept. But we must also consider how it really can affect our lives personally right here in 2023. Well, Jesus was made king of the universe. It's the ultimate result, and we celebrate that. But this is where the term reign of Christ really begins to make sense. Because if Jesus has been handed the keys of the kingdom, then it's Jesus who reigns. And as we hear in the Hallelujah Chorus, and he shall reign forever and ever. So what would the reign of Christ look like? What would the world be like with Christ as our ruler in the sense that Christ makes the rules? And let's take that a step further. Do we see the reign of Christ in the world today? Or even in our churches, where it should definitely have its start? Well, one of the key attributes of the reign of Christ is unity. That the old divisions would be healed, that battles would cease. Well, the world does not have a very good record on this one. Improved technology has made for greater awareness of other cultures And yet it seems that it grows, that there's greater polarization. Just this week, we saw the riots in Dublin against immigrants. This polarization is also true in wars involving countries, as we're witnessing in Ukraine and Russia, and even more so in religions. We may question whether the Israel-Palestine conflict is actually geopolitical or is it religious? Something to think about this week. Throughout the world, Muslims, Christians, Hindus, and Jews, they seem to be more adamantly and more violently divided. And even within Christianity, there's been more fracturing. Do you know in the U.S. there are over 2,500 separate Christian denominations? And now within many of the major denominations, we're starting to see some pretty strong divisions. So maybe this unification needs to start within each individual congregation. We need to make certain that everyone continues to work together in unity of purpose, in a true Christian manner. That within the protective shelter of the individual congregation, At least there are no factions, no cliques, no lines drawn in the sand. Individual motives are put aside for the common good, and no one is excluded, and no one is left behind. In the reign of Christ, the two greatest commandments Christ ever gave, to love God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and to love one another as Christ loved us, Those should be our continuous guides to think, to think before we act, to think before we speak, to make absolutely sure we are measuring up to these simple but oh-so-necessary rules. All right, we've all heard the golden rule a thousand times, but do we really treat other people the way we would want them to treat us? Do we really? If we take a little time to think back over the past while 
and really carefully consider all the interactions we have had with people, how would we feel if they treated us that way? If we can honestly say that, yes, we've treated everyone properly and with respect, then we are contributing to the reign of Christ. If not, we may really need to apologize to them and start the healing process that will result in the unity we seek. Now, at the beginning of each service, well, most of them, when I remember, we share the peace of Christ. But we also need to live the peace of Christ, to live it each and every day. Two weeks ago, we shared a lot of good thought. No, it's at 26 now. Three weeks ago, we shared a lot of good thoughts on Remembered Sunday. But they need to last for more than one day. There will be a time in the age to come when all will be as God intended, when the lion will lay down with the lamb and universal harmony will be achieved. But in the meantime, if we're to see a reflection of this in our world, we can't expect it to happen at the snap of a finger or the wave of a wand. We need to work at it, you and I alike. On Saturday, November 11th, at the Del Manor Remembrance Day service, we sang, let there be peace on earth and let it begin with me. I think we pretty much all know this song and I think we really need to remember to take each moment and live each moment in peace eternally. Each moment. So let's examine our moments carefully and how we live them and make sure that they follow Christ's teachings. By doing so, we will be acting as one, to each do our part in being loyal subjects in the reign of Christ. And by doing so, not just telling, but showing the world that Jesus is Lord. For which we say thanks be to God. Amen. Well, as this is our time of offering and giving back, a reminder to those at home that it's easy to make e-transfers to donations at glenabbeyunitedchurch.com. And as always, for everyone here, we thank you so much for the time that you spend, for the talents that you bring, and for the financial gifts to support this ministry that are about to be taken up. God bless you, and thank you. Please rise as you're able for the offertory. particular way to help your mission and we thank you for these gifts and may they be used to always 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 do your will in this world we pray all of this in the glorious name of Jesus Christ amen thank you please be seated
All right, well, before we start our prayers today, uh, as you know, in my last message, I was asking everyone to pray for Sue Cutler's grandson, Liam. And the poor little guy's been in sick kids for a month. He had a ruptured appendix, but he had so many other things going on that they needed to stabilize before they could do anything. Well, not only did it get stabilized and he had the surgery, I got a wonderful note from Sue this morning. He has gone home after a month at Sick Kids that he made a remarkable recovery in the last few days that I think amazed everyone and he's doing great. So thank you so much for your prayers on this. And I don't think this is being selfish, but I'm, I'm going to ask us to pray as well for an old friend of mine, uh, this couple I've known since grade nine. And the other day at lunch, uh, the husband revealed his wife is now at Oakville Trafalgar and was diagnosed with pancreatic cancer. And we'll be going to uh, see her this afternoon. So I'll ask you, her name is Lynn, and to keep Lynn in your prayers as more and more is revealed to them. So let's bow our heads in prayer, please. Gracious, generous God, we do give you thanks because we do appreciate all that you have done for us. The blessing we have of living in a peaceful place, the blessing of having more than we ever need, the blessing that we can use some of that to help other people, we are thankful for it. And in this way, we want to be the body of Christ. We want to do your will. We want to live out Jesus' teaching as true disciples and glory in the reign of Christ that we can help make things the way, way it should be. And when we do on to those people on the margins and help them in whatever way we can, we do them to Jesus Christ, our Savior and our Lord. We think about all those places in the world, some we mentioned earlier, where violence is still happening at an alarming rate. And we are thankful for the release of some of the hostages and Palestinian prisoners. We hope that can continue and that eventually peace will come to that area. We think, again, as always, of Ukraine and Russia. It's gone on so long and we ask that good things can happen there, that eventually the people can get back to peaceful lives. And we recognize not everywhere that things are going on make the headlines. A lot of times they're chosen because of economic importance or other factors, and some things get ignored, but you know where they are, and we ask you to touch their lives as well. In our own lives, we do. We give you so much thanks for little Liam and that he is home and that he has gotten so much better so quickly. And for the good people at Sick Kids Hospital and the doctors and medical care that he received. And today we do pray for Lynn and her family as they go through this time of trying not to let them fear too much. And God, we pray for the best possible outcome. There are people who prefer not to be named some of them have medical issues, some are recovering, some are waiting for help. And then there are people with a lot of things going on where they do need your loving touch. It's so many different areas where they need help. Help them and the people who surround them to help them get through. And in our own lives, Lord, there are things that we need your guidance with. There are things where we need clarity. There are times of mourning when we need comfort. There are times of celebration when we join right with you. And there are a lot of really personal things that we don't want to discuss with other people, yet we know we can always bring them to you, that you will always listen. You may not act as quickly or in the way that we hope, but God, we ask you to please, in the silence of these moments, 
Hear our silent prayers. And when your time is right, when you're ready to speak to us, Lord, we so look forward to your answer. And once again, as always, I thank you for this church that we can come together as a church family in unity to truly realize the reign of Christ, to announce that Jesus is Lord and to fashion our lives on Jesus' rules. And while you were here, you taught us all to pray together the words of the Lord's Prayer. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Well, as we said in our readings, Jesus has been given power and lordship over everything. And so we're going to sing that classic hymn, number 334, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. And we'll be singing verses 1, 2, four and five. So in other words, not three. Please rise as you are able. standing please as I thank our AV team this morning Richard and Bobby thank you to the choir to Yvonne to all the soloists for your music leadership to Keith and Sharon for everything they did today and the greeting and taking up offering as well as to Keith for reading so well 
and to everyone who makes this place happen. Thank you so very, very much. We're going to sing Go Now in Peace, and then we'll have the final blessing. So Tracy, do the home book, home bake treats begin today? Yes. Well, I'll tell you. On Thursday, Tracy brought in some containers of said home bake treats to put in the fridge because she said that it would be safer than the being at home. And I said, you remember, I work here, right? <laughs> I have a strong affinity for chocolate. I may have sampled one. <laughs> and they are delicious. So if you didn't have reason enough to stay and have a cup of coffee and chat, that's an added bonus for you this week. And as we do go out, like we were just saying, and go now in peace, by doing all these things, we will show the world what it means to be a follower of Christ. We'll show the world, not just say it, but show the world what the reign of Christ really means and what it can be. So may that incredibly generous love of God, the peace that our Lord Jesus Christ provides, the guidance and clarity and hope and strength of the Holy Spirit be with you and all whom you love this day and forevermore. Have a great week. Look forward to seeing you next week when it will be very Christmassy in here, and thanks to Candace and the crew for doing that. God bless you all. Have a great week. Hello.